we decided to do a book swap in, I think it was February. Of last year. Yeah. Finally, we're getting to the second part of the book swap, and it is called A Fall of a Kingdom by Hilary Bell. When I tried to read this series when I was in, I don't know, don't ask me, but I originally put it down. I got like 50 pages in, I put it down, and I was like, I can't. And then for some reason I came back to it and I was like, oh, I'll just fucking slog through it, I guess. And then I actually really enjoyed it by the end of the book. You gave me this in high school. Oh you gave God. me this in grade nine. I got to page 12. Well, you got to the end now. <laughs> it took me four times. <laughs> and maybe it's because I've read the other two that I really like this series, but I do have to admit that like they go through character growth and the first part of their character growth is pretty pretty hard to take because they're awful people. Basically what happens in this story is there is a kingdom called Farsala and they've had this long military history where their nobles have been, you know, really great in conquest and they've never been defeated and, you know, they've gotten really, really cocky. And there is this empire coming through the world, just taking over land over land over land in like a few years they've conquered the land. Three and, two countries and I believe two centuries. Yeah, but like they've gotten faster over time is the thing. And so, you know, now they're looking at Fursala and they're like, well, hey, easy pickings over here. The nobles set up this whole big pushback for the empire and they get fucking demolished. Just torn through. Basically the kingdom is in shambles and you've got these three characters who are each kind of on different sides of society working to eventually raise this country to defeat this empire. In the first book, I don't, e I don't even get that far. <laughs> That's the plot of the series, basically. Because in the, the first book, the book ends with the countries has fallen. Yeah. And I'm just like, am I a bad person that I'm working with this? <laughs> They were an awful society. Oh my god, like that's that's the thing. The entire book, I'm just like, okay, you have told me about books 300 pages, so maybe 280 times, why this country is an awful, horrible place, an income the equivalent of the Romans, and they have equality and laws and currency and just all of the good things, and it's Little things, little things in the book set me off where it's just like one of the characters pulls into this camp and he's like, wow, there are men and women here and why the hell are the men cooking the food? That's the woman's job. <laughs> and like, these are people from that empire and I'm just like, <laughs> it's like getting so mad, but it's just, but it's just like, the society is so screwed up and that's what pissed me off. It's just like how, if, if you want me to root for you, if you want me to you have to give me something <laughs> and you're not giving me anything. You're giving me this super corrupt, awful society where the, like, the nobility treat their peasants worse than their horses. The princess at one point is just like, okay, well, I'm supposed to be being sacrificed and I'm out here in the elements by myself. I guess I could make a shelter, but that's servant's work. And I'm like, honey, do you see any servants? <laughs> do you see anyone? No, no, you don't. Guess what? You're by yourself. Guess what you have to do? Get punch. Like, I was just getting really, really angry at these characters. And so the one guy, he joins with the Empire and he spies for them. And I'm just like, I don't like you as a person either, but I get your reasoning? <laughs> so the three different characters is there's Soraya, she's like a princess, her father is like the great general and you know he's gonna make everything better and you know her life has just been a breeze so far so she's like I have nothing to worry about and the Empire and uh, Farsala calls for a sacrifice and she's supposed to be the sacrifice but her father just like spirits her away and you know tells her to go stay in the mountains for a while until everything's cool. Don't yeah. worry honey I'll come back for you and then we'll marry you off. <laughs> no problem. He has an illegitimate son named Jayan. He's like kind of like the best of the three to yeah. start with where he wants to do good by his father and he wants to kind of continue the traditions but he's not really accepted by the family because you know he's the illegitimate son and he hasn't been acknowledged or anything like that. He's working to do his best. And he does the most nice things. Yeah he does. And then there's Kavi, who is a peddler. He was originally a swordsmith, but because of an incident with a noble, he ended up having the tendons cut in his hand, so he can't be a smith anymore, so he's a peddler, and he's the one who sides with 
his the entire character is, I will have my yeah. revenge, basically. And until the end. Until the end where he's just like, wow, the country's kind of fallen. Oh, look, they're going to all be slaves. Being a slave sucks. Maybe I should fix this. And I just, <laughs> the most interesting thing about the book that I found was there's kind of like a nomadic tribe that lives in the desert who have magic kind of like they speak to things souls and so they can like not be burnt by fire or they can like manipulate water or they can climb really well because they commune with the, the spirits and the rock and everything and so I'm like no follow them they're interesting I want to see how they fall in between these two gigantic awful things that are going to be warring around them you get like 60 pages when the princess ends up with the tribe next book the first book is like it it's unfortunate, but it's the least good of the three. <laughs> yeah, Nobody was good! <laughs> and it's not just, it's, and it's not like, you know, characters who are assholes who you kind of like in a way, you know? Like, no, in true. like Game of Thrones where Cersei is a monster, but I still kind of like watching her be a monster, <laughs> you know? This I was just like, oh yeah, just talk down to him because he's a peasant. Just, just do that. It, it doesn't matter that yeah, this is the guy who's connecting you to your father. Oh, you're living with peasants? Oh, they're loud? Oh, well, maybe you should have taken the room they told you to take where it was quieter. I just get really fed up very easily with people sometimes, especially yeah. characters that are stupid. Like, yeah. make stupid decisions just because they want to cause conflict. Yeah. It's like, look at me, I'm a princess. Make a shelter! <laughs> That's like my takeaway. <laughs> I liked that it was this, that they were societies that weren't kind of like your traditional European fantasy. Mm -hmm. This is totally England. Like, I liked how it was Rome and the other society kind of had like a Persian vibe to it. Yeah. So that was cool. The other interesting thing is, I don't know, did you find it in this book that they have a time limit? Yeah, the, the year-long time limit. Yeah. I kind of liked it, but at the same time, I kind of didn't. Because it's just like, oh yeah, the, it'll take a year. Like, if we if we don't do it in a year, then we'll leave. And I'm just like, eh? And then they explained it. It's just like, oh, well, if we take longer than a year, you know, we're going to drain our supplies. And then it's not worth it. And blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, I get that. But it... They don't need to, like, completely have the country subdued in yeah. here, but they have to have, like, pretty the, much... They have the, to have the major cities. The time limit makes it fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, that was finally our book swap. It's been a long time. I think my favorite book that you've given me was Passage Home. And we will talk to you later. Bye!